that's right that 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 well, um, after the performance of the team in the World Cup, uh, we can only hope that it will be the start of more support, not only from um, the TTFF Ministry of Sport, but other corporate companies interested in coming on board and recognize that once they give the necessary support, there will be good results because the under 17 team did get any more support than any other any women's team ever did before and um, the results was there the performance was there so it's necessary to put in um, as many resources as possible to help the team to, to move forward and do well in competitions Uh, really that would be people's opinions who are not aware of women's football. One, there is no proper structure involved. At primary school league, they play for months, but the uh, the difference between our teams and when you look at the skill, skill level and, and game, understand, and the whole performance of teams like Nigeria and Korea is because they've been doing this since they were very, very, very young. Since the introduction of the women's um, youth tournaments Asia was way ahead and started with youth programs and now they get to see the rewards of that because for the past tournaments they've come in the top one three uh, the top three um, three positions in all of the youth women's um, tournaments and if that's the case now then later on in a couple of years they will dominate women's football on the whole we do not have any proper structure we don't have a pathway from primary school to secondary school to club to national team there's no structure involved and so when you get a group of players who have not played at a high level who not been coached at a high level uh, when they come together for national team training you spend so much more time on basic fundamentals rather than enhancing the skills that they would come with that you spend more you spend more time than you should really so that i mean yes people may say oh um this team will get so much money and mr pellerud but really do you know where the team started well i don't i can't say i can't say i know that for the women's program um presently all teams are in training which is fantastic and is the first ever um we have a u15 team that will be starting and we have a u13 developmental team so in terms of legacy i mean that's the first time we'll have that young group of players um coming out of primary school and probably first day secondary school that will be starting to train uh in a national environment so this group of players starting at the U13 level should really be the pride and joy of the program in a few years, you know. Um, so in terms of legacy, I mean, that that is a le legacy in itself. Um, I don't know of any youth programs per se geared towards girls playing football um, under the TTFF. Um, and I'm not sure if that really is the responsibility of the TTFF or or um, the youth, um, whoever is responsible for youth development, uh, I really can't make any comments in terms of that. But I know that for the women's program itself, we do have a youth team program that will be starting to train shortly, which is the first ever for us. Well, you see, it, it, it goes back to what I said initially. There's no structure. Girls start playing at 13, 14 which is wrong they already have bad habits and posture and running and everything so it's really difficult for a coach now to try and change all of that so it would be ugly unless you start at primary school at very young ages secondary schools league i mean will not get and the girls football will not get much so i don't foresee getting much support or people really enjoy going to see it if it remains that way more and more girls have to start playing at a much younger age and that's from the primary school so really the target area is the primary schools you have to have some some kind of program where our coaches and specific 
people would have to go in and do like skills program and teach them the basics and the fundamentals. Unless that is done, then you'll continue seeing the ugly football at secondary. Well, I mean, as I said, there's so much more opportunities to play because back then it didn't, even, it didn't have under-20 team, far less for under-17 team. So you had to wait every four years uh, for a tournament. You had to train, like we would train three months before a tournament. So, I mean, the kind of preparation these teams get in now um, is so much more valuable um, for their development and their football career than it was for, for us back in the day. So, I mean, it, it is growing, it is growing, and it is a struggle everywhere, but. It, uh, in saying that it's ironic that you name two players, Aaron and Akila, and the difference with Aaron and Akila is they both continuously play they both um, continuously play at competitive levels constantly and that's what our team needs to do. They need to have the opportunity to have a lot of international uh, matches and learn how to win. They don't know how to do that. They don't know how to use Akila or Darcel or Tasha, use the players that they have to win and that's what they need to be given the opportunity to do play more friendly internationals and not be in a situation every time where where they play the points mean everything to them you know they need to be given that chance to grow as a team because that's a very very special team with a lot of potential and a lot of good players um I try not to I mean even though I, I have knowledge in the game and so forth I try to not get um, caught up in that and the coaches decisions are the coaches decisions they're not mine to make um, but for me having Mr. Pellerwood here has um, brought a certain level of professionalism and the attitude to how we treat with simple things like abs being absent Real. from session Penalties or, Penalties or, you know, emphasis, okay, so and so can make it, they may call after the session, you know, but really, um, that that's a pet peeve of his, make sure and call before that session, if you want to see that man go crazy, don't call and, and in the middle of the session and recognize you're not there, it's like if the world come to an end, it is a pet peeve and um, I think in, in treating with something that... I wouldn't say small, but it's just a matter of courtesy, you know. Um, so, calling before sessions, being on time, following structure. I, it was the first time that we had a calendar, training calendar. We stuck to. It never changed. We are training this, 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 and this is where we will be, this, 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 this. And very rarely, and that's a very rare occasion, would it change. And it had to mean that he had planned out to a certain time exactly what sessions would take place and how they would take place. So for me, the organization, structure, I enjoy that. And I think peers were comfortable in that they were now into a routine and not wondering, okay, or when they reach a change or stuff like that. To me, I, I, I could appreciate that, that level of organization professionalism um, and trying to plan as much ahead as in terms possible. of coaching I mean as a style that I think even the people who decided to bring him knew of so me if you knew that that's, that would be the style then that's what it is what is the style? a direct play it's not a passing game it's a direct play and it's something that Trinidadians are not accustomed to that may look ugly but if you break it down, you break it down. How many goals did we concede? How many goals did we score? We got four. We, we, we conceded four and we scored three. Maybe that's not so bad. But when you talk about the results itself, it's not bad. But Trinidadians, we like to see football. We like to, that's what we like to see. I, so. I like to see football too. But I mean, p people also appreciated the grittiness of the team the heart of the team and that's something that he also brought 
the intensity, the heart, grit. Uh, I don't think it have a team that played like that on the 17 team, men or women, um, that played with that grit. And I think that's where Trinidad and Tobago fell in love with that under 17 team. Because when they start to play from the first whistle, they're not stopping until the 90th minute. And I mean, they could only grow from that. 